This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. He's going to debut in 73 for the AWA. Of course, he's a clean cut baby face. Fast forward a few years in 76. Uh, Bruno tells Vincent James McMahon that he's ready to give up the WWF championship. And McMahon wants an all American type wrestler, a guy like a Jack Briscoe or a Vern Gagne type as his champion. He's going to reach out to both Eddie Graham and Sam Bushnick, who both recommend Backlund. And, uh, it's time now to get him over and establish him to a new audience. So they have superstar Billy Graham win the title in April of 77, but not in Madison square garden. They didn't want Bruno to lose there. fast forward a few months, or I guess nearly a year, February of 78 Backlund beats superstar at MSG. Uh, and now we've got him positioned as our, our unbeaten champ. The trouble is though, once he becomes the champ and he's, he's gone on this undefeated streak on his march to the title. Eddie Graham runs his TV where Bob Orton Jr. beat Bob Backlund and he airs it in New York. Did you ever hear about a falling out about Eddie Graham and, and your Vince's dad about airing this Backlund loss that happened in Florida in New York TV? No, I hadn't, but you know, there, there's also a, an alternate universe theory on Bob becoming champion in that Bruno wanted to be the champion again. And Bruno felt that he was the only guy to be the WWF champion. So he didn't want to work all the towns. Bruno didn't work all the towns. He worked handpicked the major markets where he wanted to go. So Vince senior was in a dilemma. He didn't want to put the championship on Bruno again and, and, have to kind of cater to all of Bruno's demands. So he looked for something completely opposite of Bruno. And that was Bob Backlund. And the feeling was that he could make anyone the champion and make them successful by booking all around them and, and putting the championship up on a pedestal. So it was the title that drew more so than the talent. Therefore, Bob Backlund was born. Bob became one of the longest reigning uh, WWF champions in history. It is funny, though, because I do feel like, well, first of all, I really enjoyed Superstar's work at the time. I'm not saying bell to bell. I know you would say, and then the bell rang. But he was such an over-the-top character. It was refreshing, you know, in that era, or at least to me, looking back. It's not like I was watching wrestling for Were years. you even born yet? No, but I'm saying when I go back and that's what I was getting to, if I go back and watch stuff from the seventies, it just feels sort of blah. And then bam, here comes superstar. And it's like, what the fuck is this? And, uh, I feel like Backlund was probably in a, I don't know, challenging position, almost the Steve young position to use a football analogy, because when you look up the, the records, he headlined more than 40 MSG garden, you know, Madison square garden sellouts, 67% of the time he sold out and that's one of the better percentages in MSG history, at least from the wrestling side, I think he's second only to like Sam Martino, but because Bruno had such a run that whoever came behind him, those are going to be really big shoes to feel and probably unrealistic expectations all around. No. Well, yeah, but at the same time, you got to start somewhere and people will always compare you to what came before it's new it's different and you have to make changes along the way you can't just continue with bruno forever and ever especially if bruno doesn't want to do it we should also mention that uh once vincent kennedy mcmahon takes over he wants a different style champion than bob Backlund. he wants to get it on hulk hogan but he doesn't want to have a baby face beat a baby face so they you know, stick the iron cheek in there to be a transitional champion of sorts. And Hulk Hogan is, is the man and, and we're off and running in 84, but supposedly, uh, your events asked Bob Backlund to bleach his hair blonde and turn heel. And when Backlund refused, McMahon had no use for him and got rid of him in summer of 84. Is that the way you remember that going down or, or hearing about it going down? I know that predates you by a few years. 
Yeah, I, I've, I've heard several versions of that story, and yes, Vince did want to change Bob's character and do something new with him and turning him heel, not bleaching his hair and all that stuff. I don't know if that's true or not. It may have been. But yeah, Vince wanted to make Bobby a heel and do something different, which Bobby didn't want to do. It is interesting, you know, what he winds up doing once, you know, Vince doesn't really have any use for him anymore and, and cuts him loose in 84. He doesn't just go show up on Crockett and, or, or somewhere else. He's still really sticking around with a bunch of other promoters in the Northeast. Why do you think that is that, that he didn't just immediately try to reach out to Crockett and do something there? I think that Bob looked at it as he lived in Glastonbury, Connecticut, still lives in Glastonbury, Connecticut, and this was his home. So for Bobby to go somewhere else, he would have to pack up his wife and his daughter and move. And I don't think that that was something that Bob was really interested in doing. Plus, Bob had been used by Ben to go all over the country, all over the world, really. As the champion, and Bob, I think, felt that he could pick his pick and choose his spots. You know, I remember, God, uh, must have been seventies, early eighties, that we had Bob Backlund down in Houston, and Bob came in and worked and did his stuff. I think one time he they sent Alpha in to work with him and. Uh, other times he, he did other things, but Bob was the kind of guy when he finished his match, he would stay in the ring and sign every single autograph. Now, when people are watching this, you know, the show's over. You got this guy from New York that just came in and and he won and he's happy and he's celebrating people coming up to the ring to get his autograph. And normally come in and disperse the crowd and, and Bob insisted he was going to sign every autograph. So now more people come down, more people come down. And Bob didn't leave till he had shook everyone's hand and signed every autograph. That's the kind of Bob, guy Bob Backlund is. Well, we know that one of the weird things about Backlund, and I don't know that this has happened for anybody else like it, I mean, this is the guy who has a six year run as world champion. He's headlined for years and years, but his popularity really grinds down to, I mean, I think some would say almost nil. I mean, he's not nearly what Pedro Morales was as a draw after being champion or certainly not Bruno San Martino. Why don't you think Backlund had a, a bigger connection with fans of that era, because it does feel like when he was off TV, it was just like he was gone and move on next. Well, I think that Bob, I think that there was a certain segment of the audience that really did love Bob and miss Bob, but he was replaced with Hulk and all of the grandeur of the rock and wrestling connection during that time that I don't think that, the audience had time really to miss him and want for him. If that makes any sense because he just was, he was gone and all this new bombardment of talent descended upon New York. Yeah, it is spectacular when you think about it. I mean, he feels like sort of the last of a dying breed when you get the rock and wrestling connection and the over the top characters that, that Vince had in mind. I just don't think there's been anybody who really sort of fell off the face of the earth, so to speak, like Backlund did. Do you remember him ever coming up in conversation before 92? I mean, we know that you guys are going to start having conversations with him then, but did it come up in 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, anywhere along the way? Not that I ever can recall. And Bob was one of those guys that didn't push for it either. Um, hell of an athlete, but I think that from a drawing standpoint, Bob wasn't the draw. The title was the draw, but also you had a lot around Bob. You had the strong bows, at Pattersons, and a lot of different stories, Nuka, and Morocco, and all that shit that were going on during Bob's title race. 
Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.